Okay, welcome back to the next part of the video. In the last video, we brought the XR2 from Venus over here to Earth. So, it is now time to get down toward the uh, planet, hit the atmosphere to slow ourselves down, and land. So, let's go ahead and start planning that. If I look over here at Transex, I can see that my encounter velocity at Earth is close to 16 kilometers per second. It's uh, 15,870 meters per second. And I know that that's actually just too darn fast. Um, if you come down into the atmosphere at that velocity, uh, two things, one of two things can happen. Number one, you're going to be a little bit high in the atmosphere and you're not going to get enough deceleration so you're just gonna slow down a little bit if any and then your eccentricity is going to be going to be so high that you're going to skim past the atmosphere and just keep going out the other potential outcome is that okay you bring your your altitude down enough so that you get all the deceleration you need but at that velocity you're going to burn up now you may remember way back in uh, video 3 you know I explained that I brought enough extra fuel with me so that I could eliminate all the Delta V so that I could get captured if I wanted to do if I wanted to do it that way and it turns out I've actually got enough fuel that I could even go all the way down to uh, periapsis and basically get into a parking orbit just using the full power of the main engines but that's not real um, satisfying I don't think I think people like atmospheric braking it just it's cool and it's efficient so we're going to do that but we can't do it at that velocity it just can't be done I, I dare you to try it using the XR2 you might be able to get away with it with the standard delta glider because you know that thing is basically made out of an obtainium and it won't burn up but using a real using a vessel that can can realistically overheat then this is too fast I could bring the delta uh, the encounter velocity down to 14.5 kilometers per second and that would work but even that would be a little fast and would make for it, it would just make the the process of slipping my vessel into that narrow window a little difficult so to make life not any more difficult than it has to be I'm going to bring this PE velocity all the way down to 13.5 uh, that'll give me a high encounter velocity but it'll be low enough that it'll be manageable when you come back from the moon I think your encounter velocity at the earth is closer to 11 kilometers per second so we're still going to be going much faster than we would be if we were coming back from the moon so it's still going to be a you know a challenging experience to, to some extent so let me go ahead and bring interplanetary MFD up on this side and let's get ready to, ready to do this uh, deceleration burn here to get rid of some of this velocity now the reason I brought interplanetary up on that side is so that I can keep an eye on my PEA as I do this burn as soon as I hit the main engines uh, this PEA is going to immediately drop and it would get down to you know negative 500 or negative 1000 or something if I didn't do anything about it so uh, what I can do is just rotate slightly um, one way or the other let me see I'm facing backwards so rotation so I need to rotate a little bit this way and that'll keep the PEA from going down so I'm going to start the main engines and bring the PE velocity 
down to 13.5 and I'm going to use rotation to control the PEA according to what interplanetary MFD is reporting. Okay, you can see the uh, PEA is actually going up there a little bit, so if I rotate just a little bit that way, there we go, now it's coming down, and that'll just let me keep control over where that PEA is going to end up. And I would warp time ahead, but if I do that, then I won't be able to control this very well. And we'll just kind of leave it right there. It's counting up right now, but as we get uh, more, yeah, there it goes. Now, as I was going to say, as we get further into the burn, it'll kind of reach a point where it tops out and then starts going backwards. So I might even want to rotate a little more out because it's probably going to pass, you know, that 70, 70 kilometer point and go back further down. And I'm trying to keep it basically right around 70 kilometers. Yeah, it's going negative again. So let me go a little more out. There we go. It's climbing steadily. And we're about halfway through the burn. getting pretty close to the end of the burn. And we'll go with that. And we kept our PEA basically right where we wanted it. Translation. And that's going to... Rotation. See, as I get closer to Earth, it's going to change a little bit, but is it going to go up or down? I'm not sure. Let me go prograde. It won't change by much, so I'm not going to worry about it. That's the one really nice thing about Interplanetary MFD is that this map program that it has is really reliable when it comes to reporting these altitudes. But let me actually just warp time ahead by maybe a hundred. Let's go to a thousand. Go to ten thousand. It's actually holding pretty well. Translation. I'm just going to translate the uh, PEA down to like 69 and a half. Yeah, about right there. Rotation. Let's get in closer. Yeah, it's taken up a little bit, okay. Okay, okay we're down to 500 kilometers. Let's uh, get ready. APU on, closing the radiator, extending the air brake, oh. switching over to surface controls bringing up the surface HUD, rotating inverted. And making sure the elevator trim is level and not set to some weird position. And we'll get ourselves rotated, yawed, and pitched toward the velocity vector like that. And I'm going to bring orbit MFD up on this side 
change the projection to the ship, the distance to the surface, and the frame doesn't really matter. And on this side we'll look at map for now. Going to target wide awake, because you can see we're on a rather equatorial type of orbit here, so that'll be the easiest uh, that'll be the easiest space to target. And it looks like we are about halfway around, so we should be able to come around and land without having to go around a full orbit. Yeah, we should be able to decelerate enough. We'll see. And bring up the temperature display. And here in a little while, I'll also bring up uh, Aerobrake MFD and Base Sync, but before we worry about those, we need to get through the initial atmospheric braking phase. Now, I know that people would love to see this view as I'm coming down through the atmosphere because it's cool and you get to see the re-entry flames and all that, but there's just no way to control the vessel when I'm looking at it like that. So it, I will try to, you know, flip back and forth out here every now and then, but I can't fly the vessel like this. I, I've tried, and every time I try, I just burn up. So now we'll turn off uh, turn off rotation here in a moment. What I wish is that I could actually have this view available in an external MFD so I could fly the vessel like that and then have that view up here in the corner for everybody to look at. Oh. Alright, now I gotta get down to business. So what I'm doing here, what I want to do, is just keep the vessel steering straight at that velocity vector. And I want to do that until the meters per second, the, ver uh, the vertical speed, is getting down toward, you know, close to zero, but more like 150 or 200 meters per second. And once it drops down to that point, then the vessel's going to very quickly want to pull itself back up out of the atmosphere. So what I've got to do is once it gets down to about, you know, once the vertical speed gets much below 200, then I've got to immediately start pitching uh, into the atmosphere so that once I, you know, once I get to periapsis, which is just 13 seconds away, the vessel won't want to pull out into the atmosphere. So like right now, I need to pull down and just hold the vessel like that even though I'm warming up so I've got to watch my vertical speed or rather watch my temperature <coughs> but I can't let the vessel I can't let the vertical speed go positive if it goes positive I'll skip out okay, I've got to watch my temperature display Warning, hull temperature. Warning, hull temperature. Okay, vertical speed went positive, but it's not too bad at the moment because I'm still low enough. Okay, and there we are. Now I just got to hold this position. And I'll give you a quick look outside. And that's all you get because I've got to maintain control. <coughs> Watching the temperature display. And I'm intentionally letting myself climb up a little bit, but now I'm pulling back in. Okay. Okay, quick look outside for you. Okay, I gotta watch my vertical speed, it's positive. I 
is trying to hold the vertical speed right here, basically around zero. Okay, there we can look outside for a second. And you can see our eccentricity closing in slowly. And we've lost about 1,000 meters per second in velocity. Go ahead and set the elevator trim a little more down. Uh, or rather, you know, up elevator, but... That'll allow me to relax pressure on the back stick a little bit. The difficult part is over. Uh, well, in some sense, they, uh, in, in part, the difficulty of this type of maneuver is flying through the whole thing patiently without becoming apathetic or bored. But what I was referring to is when you initially hit the atmosphere right there at a very high velocity, uh, it's easy to overheat or skip out. So once you've got yourself in that, you know, in that narrow window, uh, it's not too hard to hold it. You know, you can see my vertical speed just, just by just a little bit of back pressure, back and forth on the stick, I'm able to hold it you know, real close to a zero, and the vessel is in the green, so I'm very hot, but I'm not, you know, overheating. And what I can do, I'll quickly try to get a different view here like that. Let me jump back inside. You can see when I go outside like that, you can see how much my vertical speed shifted because you just can't see what's going on when you're out there. And my vertical speed dropped all the way to negative 25 just in the two or three seconds I was looking outside. I guess one thing I could do, let me do this, let me go to uh, warp 0.1 for a second, let me press Alt F4, bring up an external MFD. If I can bring up the surface like that, let me go back to real time now and get the vertical speed where I need it. There we go. Let me make this a little bigger. Okay. Yeah, I can do that for a little bit. Now I can see the vertical speed, which is what I really need to see more than anything. So we can have that cooler external view for people to look at. And I don't have to worry about the temperature at this point. As long as I know that my vertical speed is close to zero and I know where my altitude's at. So basically my eyes are on the vertical speed at all times.
and it takes a while just to get captured. Information. APU fuel 80%. All right, I'm gonna jump back inside for a while. It's still easier when I have this view. <coughs> S-Intricity is 1.12. Oops, I'm climbing quite a bit there. Let me back up. It's still possible to uh, skip out, so you've got to really watch your vertical speed until you're captured. It's uh, you know, you you definitely don't want to run the risk of getting distracted and skipping out. And in fact, once you are captured, you really want to, you know, keep paying attention for quite a while because uh, you'll notice when we get captured here, our apoapsis is going to be, you know, like 400. Uh, you know, 400,000 kilometers, it's going to be way out there. So you don't want to skip out even after you get captured. But at the very least, if you did uh, mess up and, you know, uh, get too high in the atmosphere and lose control of the vessel and skip out once you're captured, at least you can go around. But you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. Speaking of going around, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to land at Wide Awake right away or not. I may have to go around one to orbit. Eh. Well, we should be able to make it. Almost captured. And there I'm captured, and I can see my apoapsis. You can see how far out that is. And of course, it closes down quickly, but you know, you can imagine if you accidentally skipped out right now, you know, you'd still have a huge orbit. Let me watch my vertical speed, it's getting pretty low, so I'm gonna heat up. Not something else you can do lose your focus and burn up. Okay, we're back under control. Alright. Now that we're captured, I'm going to see about trying to get lined up with the base. Um, actually, whoa, 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 whoa. Warning, hull temperature. Warning, hull temperature. It's so easy to just lose focus for the briefest second and just have disastrous results. Let me get the elevator trim. Climb up to like 67 kilometers. I do need to get steering here shortly though, or else I'm never going to make the base on this first pass. Okay, that should be okay for a second. Let's target wide awake. And I'm definitely climbing too much. 
don't want that either. I need a co-pilot. And you just gotta bear with me while I do what I've gotta do here. My hit, my hands are pretty busy, my mind is pretty busy, so it's kinda difficult to offer a lot of commentary. Let me change this to one. Less stuff to look at, I could turn off that graphic. Getting lined up with the base won't be a problem. I and I think we've still got time to, uh, you know, completely slow down. I think. Watch my altitude getting a little low. So I'm going to push up on the stick a little bit to get my meters per second, my vertical speed. Back up more closer to zero, like that. Okay, now basically, just need to hold this position. Things are coming along well. Distance to the base is coming down. Everything's fine, just like this. Gonna bring up arrow brake. That's gonna come in handy soon. Once the distance to the base is down to, uh, you know, close to zero, then I'm going to level out, uh, roll out into a, you know, a zero bank, and then I'm going to start focusing on cramming the nose of the, uh, of the XR into the atmosphere as much as I can 
to start slowing down as much as possible. Okay, distance off base is just a couple hundred kilometers. And we're 9,000 kilometers away from the base. I'm going to start rolling out now. Information. APU fuel 70%. Warning. Hull temperature. Warning. Hull temperature. Oh Warning. my god. Airframe overheating. I don't mind saying that is really not only disappointing, but almost almost just rage quit okay welcome back to the next part of the video in the last video we brought the XR2 from Venus over here to Earth so it is now time to get down toward the uh, planet hit the atmosphere to slow ourselves down and land so let's go ahead and start planning that I look over here at Transex, I can see that my encounter velocity at Earth is close to 16 kilometers per second. It's uh, 15,870 meters per second. And I know that that's actually just too darn fast. Um, if you come down into the atmosphere at that velocity, uh, two things, one of two things can happen. Number one, you're going to be a little bit high in the atmosphere and you're not going to get enough deceleration so you're just going to basically get into a parking orbit just using the full power of the main engines but that's not real um, satisfying I don't think I think people like atmospheric braking it just it's cool and it's efficient so we're going to do that but we can't do it at that velocity. It just can't be done. I, I dare you to try it using the XR2. You might be able to get away with it with the standard Delta glider because you know that thing is basically made out of an obtainium and it won't burn up. But using a real using a vessel that can can realistically overheat, then this is too fast. I could bring the Delta uh, the encounter velocity down to 14.5 kilometers per second and that would work but even that would be on this side and let's get ready to, ready to do this uh, deceleration burn here to get rid of some of this velocity now the reason I brought interplanetary up on that side is so that I can keep an eye on my PEA as I do this burn as soon as I hit the main engines uh, this PEA is going to immediately drop and it would get down to you know negative 500 or negative 1000 or something if I didn't do anything about it so 
Uh, what I can do is just rotate slightly um, one way or the other. Let me see, I'm facing backwards, so... Rotation. So I need to rotate a little bit this way. And that'll keep the PEA from going down. So I'm a little fast and would make for... It, it would just make the the process of slipping my vessel into that narrow window a little difficult. So to make life not any more difficult than it has to be, I'm going to bring this PE velocity all the way down to 13.5. Uh, That'll give me a high encounter velocity, but it'll be low enough that it'll be manageable. When you come back from the moon, I think your encounter velocity at the Earth is closer to 11 kilometers per second. So we're still going to be going much faster than we would be if we were coming back from the moon. So it's still going to be a, you know, a challenging experience to, to some extent. So let me go ahead and bring interplanetary MFD up on, slow down a little bit, if any. And then your eccentricity is going to be going to be so high that you're going to skim past the atmosphere and just keep going out. The other potential outcome is that, okay, you bring your your altitude down enough so that you get all the deceleration you need, but at that velocity, you're going to burn up. Now, you may remember way back in uh, video three, you know, I explained that I brought enough extra fuel with me so that I could eliminate all the delta v so that I could get captured if I wanted to do if I wanted to do it that way and it turns out I've actually got enough fuel that I could even go all the way down to uh, periapsis and 